coming to stage, doing God's work, really. He wrote for the roast of Justin Bieber. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's also the roast battle champion at the Comedy Store. So, um, yeah, please give it up for Mr. Joe Dosh. Among you was just now just utterly unimpressed that I wrote for the Justin Bieber roast. Right after he said that, so I was like, oh wow, no, no, no. <laughs> Good for you, that's fine. I made, you made $300 right for the TV, did you? You're in Malibu now, we don't give a shit. How you doing? How you doing, 1%? Good to see you. Really glad, really glad you could all come out here. I know you had to get up early to like fire your servants right before the holidays. Or something. You know, so the fact you took the time. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, I, you know what, guys? I did get to write for the Justin Bieber roast this year, and I tell you what, man, in the process of doing so, I had to learn more about Justin Bieber than any grown man should just have to care. Like, I'm a grown man, everyone. My brain is like a Tiger Beat magazine now. It's terrible. I can't do it. I can't. I tell you what, though, one thing I did learn, he is gorgeous. I don't give a shit. Who knows what he is? Like, have you seen, man, have you seen Justin Bieber's ass? It's like a little turkey. It's just, it's just moist. It's just... <laughs> I am a gay gentleman, everyone. Uh, if that's not unclear. I doubt there are any gay people in the audience. They, our rich gay people don't move up to Malibu. We, they kind of just turn 40, we just exile them down to Palm Springs so we don't have to look at their horrible agent bodies. They're the worst. Really. Uh, Tell you what, everyone, I'm on the road doing comedy a lot, which means I'm, I'm surrounded by straight people at all times. I mean, not you guys, you guys are cool, but just, uh, just, just, just inundated with vagina fucking savages all the time. You, got, you know what, though? I've learned a lot about straight people recently. One thing I've learned, you guys give way more of a shit about cheating than we do. Like, I don't know any gay male monogamous couples. Like, I know, like, people who are too old to go out and fuck anymore. I know that. Like, I know... <laughs> You know, like older couples up in the valley be laying in bed just be like, God, I'm sick of looking at you. I'm at Netflix, I guess. Like, I know that. That's more sloth than devotion, really. <laughs> you guys get all bent out of shape about, like, cheating and stuff. You know, like, I, I was talking to my buddy Ari recently. Ari went to Israel for about three months. He comes back and goes, oh, Ari, how's Israel? He goes, man, Israel's terrible. I went to Israel I lost my faith in humanity. He goes, Jesus, Ari, what happened? He goes, every girl there cheated on their boyfriend. <laughs> Yeah, right. You see, you're, like when I hear I went to the Middle East and lost my faith in humanity, I set my tragedy bar a little higher. <laughs> and every girl cheated on their boyfriend. Like, I was expecting to hear a story like, I saw a toddler step on a landmine and said I got someone got a hand job at a youth hostel. <laughs> Jesus. Every girl cheated on their boyfriend. He's like saying this in front of a pile of limbs. <laughs> Not a lot of people laugh at that pile of limbs, Tag. <laughs> you guys are among them. <laughs> I feel like, you know, can I tell you something I'm tired of, everyone? I'm tired of having to announce to audiences that I'm gay. I feel like I have to point it out that I'm going to talk about it. Because, like, I get, like, I don't really sound like I am. Like, I sound like I get one resentful blowjob in a bush every six months. Like, <laughs> right? Like, while I say things like, don't look me in the eyes, you faggots. Like, that's, that's, well, that's what we used to have to do. Sir. <laughs> you can always be so open. We used to have a bush-based sexual economy in America. I did not, I mean, not so much like in Hollywood. Like, getting your dick sucked in a bush is really more of like a valley activity. It's, I imagine up by, like, Northridge, say, there's a lot of shrub-based bullshit going on. I was in Vegas recently, and I did that joke, and it bombed really, really hard, and I realized they probably don't get a lot of bush dick suckings up there. They, well, they don't really have the plant cover for it, you know? <laughs> I picture some guy, like, kneeling behind a tumbleweed, like, Todd, no, we can see you, you're being a silly goose. <laughs> some sunscreen on. <laughs> we can move on, sure. <laughs> There's one word for that joke, it's thorough. <laughs> I'm with you guys. I'm a comedian, everyone. Uh, believe it or not, I used to be a drag queen for a long time. You can probably tell by my dainty and effeminate manner, but I, you know what? I miss it, everyone. I really do. I miss doing it a lot. I mean, like, it was fun, but I'm not, I'm not very good at it. When I'm in drag, I look like Kelly Osbourne doing the walk of shame. It's not, 
Cute. Tell you what, though, I realized how much I missed it when I went and saw the Cinderella movie uh, a couple months ago at the El Cap in Hollywood. And then I was there, and you could win the Cinderella dress. They were auctioning off the dress. Guys, I would elbow a Make a Wish child in the throat <laughs> to get my hands on the Cinderella dress. I, I'm not. I'm not kidding, sir. She could be wheezing her last breath out of her little shriveled raisin lungs. I'd be standing over the dress going, we don't get to wear it in heaven. That's not good. <laughs> like dancing with Richard Madden in her house. <laughs> it's kind of dark for a beach town. I agree. <laughs> is anyone else, does anyone else want to get off the internet? Like, just, you ever think about like just getting off all of it? Yeah. Oh, I, I don't want to do it anymore. It's just, it's embarrassing how like dependent we all are on an outcast. As I, I tell you what, I was talking to my buddy George recently. A little backstory about George, everyone. George is a coke addicted ex Mexican gangbanger who did 12 years in prison for assault. I told George, I don't have an Instagram. He goes, What's wrong with you? <laughs> Facebook's the worst one, too. I figured out why. Facebook is just, if Facebook is full of people who would rather be smart than happy, you know, it's like whatever the fun thing is going on in life, people on Facebook just want to ruin it. Like, I'm talking about the kind of asshole that, like, maybe it's Thanksgiving, they'll get online and they'll post something like, Happy Indian Genocide Day. You know, it's like, <laughs> right, right. And what, what they're really saying is if you were smart, you'd be miserable like me. Just, just, just let people enjoy whatever it is. Don't ruin people's good time with some fact that's not even relevant anymore. Did you know Christmas lights were originally invented to blind the Jews? Don't give me that. <laughs> Don't pull away from me. Uh, that's not accurate, everyone. Don't go, don't go quoting that fact to people. Oh, that kind of sounds right, though. You know what I mean? Like, right? Like, if I were watching the History Channel, I saw some scroll at the bottom. Like, did you know in 1930s America, Christmas lights are known as Jew blinders? But like, oh, look how far we've come. <laughs> I forgot what town I was in for a second. <laughs> Appreciate you guys coming out here. It is. It sounds like a cliche at this point, but it's, it's a weird time to do comedy. People are very, very, very easily offended by things these days. And you might have been like, you might have heard about how like college students are kind of the worst at this. Like, like it's difficult to talk about things around them. And I gotta admit, this is kind of true because I was doing a show at the University of Santa Barbara recently. I did that joke. I just did. Blah blah blah. Blind the Jews. Hilarity. This young man, <laughs> this male, mind you, looks up at me after I say that and he goes, "So aggressive." <laughs> disgusted by that. He, he didn't even say it. He didn't even go, I know, that's kind of aggressive. He just whimpered it out of his face. <laughs> and his words just flew away in the air like daffodil petals. Like, what? Guys, I'm a gay drag queen bottom and I intimidated this kid. I'm too manly. <laughs> for this young man of trappable age. Is that like... And this was in California, too. Got, in t kid, in 20 years, gangs are gonna try to steal your water. You realize that, right? Like, in two decades, this whole state's gonna be like Mad Max with vegan options. So you <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna say something. Um, that is, I'll, I'll just come out with it. This is a little rebellious for California, I found out. But um, I don't want, I'm, is anyone else like not anti-gun? In the room, like not not a soul. I feel like a couple people are, but you're not going to be like the brightest part of this in the moment. <laughs> like if someone would jump up, you'd follow, maybe, but you're not. Uh, but here's the thing, though. Anyway. There it is. There it is. I like that. You own your words. Here's my thing. Here's my thing about guns, everyone. I, my, my own, I grew up. You gotta understand. I grew up in South Dakota, everyone. Exactly. Just garbage. Nothing, South Dakota. And I just think, if you're gonna be anti-gun, you should have the decency to name something else fun to do in South Dakota. I'm all ears. <laughs> Toss out a suggestion. Like, if you want to stop gun ownership, don't tweet about it. Don't write your congressman. Go to my hometown and start laying down go-kart tracks. Like, be the change you want to see. <laughs> yes, sir, I mean, I don't... Like, I, I really respect you guys, but I think this is what people on the coasts don't understand. There's just so little to do in so much of this country. Guys, the beach for you is right over there. I had to drive six hours to get to Minneapolis. Ugh, you know? <laughs> do what we used to do for fun when we were kids. I swear to God, this is all true. And this is like, like, 
people look at me like I'm insane. This is what we would do. Me and like my 13 year old friends, we would grab all our guns, just unsupervised, no adults around, and we would go to Walmart and we would buy propane tanks and we would buy road flares. And we would take them out into the middle, uh, right? Yeah. We would take them out into the middle of a frozen lake. We would light the road flare, put the propane tank in front of it. We would run to the other edge of the lake. We'd shoot the propane tank. It would explode in a big, like, Manhattan Project fireball. <laughs> and it would melt a huge hole in the ice. Like, and I'm sorry, if you're anti-gun and you haven't done exactly this, it's like a Mormon telling me not to drink. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, elder douchebag, you don't understand the fun. <laughs> People don't get in like the middle third of this country. There's not a ton of difference between like what kids do for fun and what Hamas does to train. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> second Fifty Shades of Grey movie. Yeah. Oh god, that book is like the Mein Kampf of basic bitches. Just why? <laughs> On that note, though, everyone, there's no way to be delicate about this. Why start now? But uh, I've been going to leather bars a lot. <laughs> well, I want to get married one day, you guys. I, uh... <laughs> one lonely clap over there. He's hoping he meets the other leather fan. <laughs> That's how I met your grandma. <laughs> There's this other bar I go down to in Silver Lake all the time. It's a lot of fun. I'm there all the time. And the last night I was there, I found out the week before they hosted a big sex party that got raided by the cops. And I just thought, like, gay BDSM leather bar got raided by the cops. I had to have been, like, the most cooperative series of arrests in LAPD history. <laughs> right? like, I want to know, like, at what stage in the arrest they realized it wasn't just sexy fun anymore, you know? Like, was there some dumb queen in the courthouse going like, ooh, daddy's having me arraigned. Sweetie, no, that's not. <laughs> that's not what's happening. You need to listen to your public defender. <laughs> hey, thank you guys very, very much. I'm Joe. <laughs>